What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here and today I am answering a question that I had received on Twitter and that question is um, basically a tutorial on how to structure files in a design system and what I'm going to do is break down one approach to structuring your design system and that being having a design system team within Figma and as you can see here uh, say this is a team and here is a project structure and I'm using a number based format and by default I'm I'm always alphabetically organizing these projects so that I have them in order and that things aren't moving it through the sort order of uh, when things were modified that can be very confusing and essentially the only people who have access to this design systems team are the design systems designers and by default um, at the organization level you can ensure that th these libraries whether they're production-based libraries or say some sort of exploratory libraries, these are enabled by default for designers on teams X, Y, and Z. This is something you can do. So instead of constantly manually providing access to designers as you're hiring and, and scaling your team, you can just have this enabled by default. And what I have here is a production folder and essentially that Holds, holds all of the design systems, um, say whether there's multiple systems or not, um, maybe it's it's a file per device, um, whether it's like a mobile or a web-based system, having those in, in their respective files will be helpful in regards to scaling and also the management of that and the maintenance. Um, and that's kind of the purpose of the production library and that is where all of the design systems work that is actually in production lives on the design side um, and ideally having that system mapped one-to-one -one with with the developers design system as well whether it's uh, on the web or for iOS or or some other platform and then here we have a sandbox project and the sandbox is a place to hold files for a deep exploratory work in regards to the system or say maybe visionary work for reskinning a product or doing a refresh within the product having sort of this this place to hold and host exploratory work so eventually you can extract uh, potentially new components or styling from this exploratory work and have it in a place to where you can properly implement that into production later on down the road whether that gets implemented or not. And then the third project essentially houses templates. Each template is a Figma file and that could be used for different types of documentation or quick onboarding on various things. You could have like a design systems checklist template. Um, you can also have like an information architecture map resource that's enabled as a library but that could live within the resources project, um, any type of contribution process, or like for example, how do you actually contribute to the production design system? Um, and one great way of doing that is utilizing Figma's branching features and maybe having some sort of documentation on that to guide, say, feature designers or other designers outside of the design systems team to contribute to production, having that documentation in place, and then of course having a archive project to kind of archive um, the design system work over time, potentially having a file where you can see the evolution of that product uh, over each version of that product. And that is pretty much how I would kind of go about structuring a design system depending on the company and the scale. Uh, there are different challenges that you'll face, but generally this has proven to work well at some companies that I have worked at in the past. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, I know this didn't go into the specifics of a Figma file or the contents within it, but uh, this high level overview should be enough for you to really get cranking on structuring a design system. If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.